Hello and welcome back to Gary's Garage. In this episode I am not going to be dragging the car onto a trailer. So you might be asking, well why? You said last time that's what we were going to do. So I've been pre-recording a few of these videos and between recording the last one and this one the whole world seems to have gone crazy and the UK is in lockdown because of coronavirus. So that means that the person who's going to be making my radiator is not working right at the moment. So I'm going to have to find something else to do. So I'm going to pull forward uh, one of the plans I had, which is to replace the rear differential. So let's pull that out. So the car spent a few weeks with the front end up in the air. Now let's put the back end up in the air. Now we're safely up in the air and the wheels are off. It's time to get underneath and start disconnecting and we'll start with the prop shaft and the drive shafts. Okay, so here's the prop shaft to diff that needs unbolting. These four bolts are the ones that hold the prop to the diff and up here is the speed sensor which picks up the signal from this as it rotates and this gives the rear wheel speed into the ECU. But let's get this unbolted. is the prop free. Next, drive shafts. Okay, now that's the drive shaft disconnected from the diff end, need to take it out from the hub. And that should push out of there. And I just need to manhandle the drive shaft to get it out. Easier said than done. On any reasonably normal car, that would be about all that's needed to do before the diff can be unbolted and dropped out of the car. However, this is a bit different. Originally, I had planned on putting a Dideon rear suspension set upon. Now that is uh, sort of part way between a live axle, um, which is where the diff and drive shafts and hubs and everything is all in one solid package. Think. Ford Mustang um, and independent is what you'd find on a more modern car. So halfway between that is the DD on where there's a floor mounted diff like independent suspension but the two rear hubs are connected directly together by a big fat tube. So I started to do that, made that up, put that on the car um, and then decided to change my mind before it went on the road and went to fully independent. So the diff carrier that I made based on the Dideon would have allowed the diff to drop in and out really nice and easy. But when I then changed it to independent, the diff carrier was on the car. So we just built up the rest of the suspension around the diff that was already bolted on the car. And unfortunately, slight miscalculation meant that 
I can no longer get the diff out without taking the whole diff carrier off the car. So that means I've now got to disconnect the suspension arms and take the whole diff carrier off, off the car. So let's do that now. Okay, so I thought I'd give you a bit of a closer look at the diff and suspension setup. So on each side is the hub carrier and the strut mount and it has three arms that go off to the diff carrier and also two arms, one you can see just there and the other one is above it and they go off to forward on the chassis. So what I need to do is take off this arm here, this arm here and this arm here on both sides. That will then allow me to undo the bolts up here and a couple at the front that hold the diff carrier on and then the diff carrier should come downwards and out the car. We're up here towards the front of the diff, there's the input and that just up there, up there is one of the four bolts that holds the diff carrier in. Fortunately, this exhaust is in the way, so I'm gonna to have to take this bit of the exhaust off. In fact, I might take both back sections of the exhaust off, uh, just to give myself a little bit more room, and then we'll pull this diff carrier off. So, exhaust first. Okay, now I'm going to get the trolley jack in to support the diff and undo those four nuts and hopefully the diff will come down quite nicely. Okay, there's a the speed sensor. And I even pointed it out earlier that it was there and I forgot that it needed to be disconnected. Right, here's the diff and diff carrier. So what I need to do now is unbolt the diff from the carrier. And because of these bars at the bottom that the lower arms attach to, the diff's got to come forward and out up the top. So first off, let's undo these front and rear support bars and then get this diff out. Keep walking, cross walking, lip locking with you. I know it, you know it. And now with a little bit of jiggery pokery, we should be able to get the diff and the carrier separated. I know it, you know it, we make it, we make it. Okay, so the way this has to come out is that these drive shaft cups have to come out of the diff. So as we saw the problem was that the drive shaft outputs on the diff are too wide to go down between those two bars on the left and the right. So the plan is to cut out this bar here and attach it to here with some brackets that bolt on that are welded onto there and will bolt through using this existing hole here and add a bracket at the front to also bolt it on. Hopefully then I can just remove this one side, get the diff in at a bit of an angle and rotate it round, slide it back into place and then bolt this lower bit box section back into place 
and that should retain the strength in it. Make sure that this suspension pickup point is in the right place and doesn't move. This joint here is the one that I really wanted to slice through fully because that's the one that I'm not going to be able to get to once I weld on the bracket. The others I've sliced through a little bit but have left some still attaching the two parts together. So once I've got the bracket welded on I can then slice off the rest of it and that end will become free but I don't want to totally remove it because everything's nicely lined up at the moment. So my plan is to take a small length of this two by one inch box section and cut it so that it will sit along here, go over this one inch box and I will bolt it up to this upright using the hole that the rear lower arm bolts through. So that should give that quite a nice bit of rigidity. It will stay butted up against this when it's all bolted together and that should be the mount for that side. So let's do some cutting and some welding. Okay, so that will sit just about there. Just a little bit wobbly, mostly due to that weld there. So I'll see if I can get in and grind that weld back just a fraction so that that sits just a little bit nicer and doesn't rock like that. And then you can see about welding it on here and then slicing the rest of it off. Okay, it's still sitting just a little bit high there. So I think what I'm gonna do is just trim a little bit off of there. Actually looking at that close now, I can see that's gone at an ever so slight angle. So yeah, I'll just trim a tiny little bit from there. Now that is sitting much, much nicer there now. So I can clamp that up and weld it up. Okay, now that those two sides are welded on, I'm going to slice off the rest of the welds that hold it onto this upright. I think some of that is going to be a hacksaw job. Success! It is free! Need to do a bit of tidying up, but it is free. Now I can move on to trying to look at the back end. Right, first thing with this back edge is that this bracket isn't needed at all. 
that was one of the original brackets that held on the hub when it was a DD on so that's totally not needed now so that can come off pretty much in its entirety and then I think what I will do is add something in here which will then bolt through this here I think that will give me a nice strong solid connection and I might even put something round the round the side just to stop the front to back movement so That's the bulk of the bracket removed with the cutting disc on the grinder and a hacksaw and lots of elbow grease. So the next thing is to finish taking off the rest of the bracket and the welds with a grinding disc on the grinder. Now I'd like to just have a quick shout out here to Home Built by Jeff, a fantastic YouTube channel. And he recently mentioned about these quick release grinder attachments. Now I'm not getting sponsored for this at all, I just saw it on his channel, thought it was a great idea and got one and it's been brilliant. That makes changing grinder attachments so much easier. And another little tip is to cable tie the tools to the power cable for your, for your grinder, that way you don't have to hunt around for them. So now I've quickly changed that grinding wheel Let's grind off the rest of this bracket. Right, so as I was looking at this, I've realized what I want to do. I'm going to put a piece in this way with the open ends as it sits at the moment, top and bottom, so that I can get a spanner in there to still do up this short bolt that holds the front support in. And then I'm gonna come a bit further back and I'm gonna then put a bit of box section here, which will then bolt through onto this bit here, this front upright bit. That will then give me the right distance between there. I'll have bolt through there, bolt through there, and that should hold it nice and secure. Okay, so that's that welded onto there. Just blew through a little bit on the very end, but I don't think that's gonna be a big problem. So this front support bar here will still go in. It is a always been a bit of a tight fit anyway, and just needs hammering home lightly. Just like that. So what I'll do next is take this back out, then drill a hole through these two, and I will then use that to bolt these together. So I'll drill the hole first, and that will then give me somewhere to line it back up to when it all goes back together. Once I've drilled the hole, I can finish removing this section from here with that one remaining weld there then this can come off and be fully welded up. There we go, removed. 
before I go any further, I'm going to see whether that will fit on top of the diff now. Yes, that looks like a win. So when this is bolted to the car, the theory should be, loosen the diff, slide it forward, rotate it slightly, and take it out at an angle. I think that will do quite nicely, and that also means I don't need to touch this side. So this side stays nice and stiff and strong, and then it's only this one side that's removable. Right, let's move on to finishing welding up this and getting it so it will bolt back onto this bit. That is the rest of that welding done. So next I'm going to just grind back some of these bits where I removed it from the main frame and then finish drilling out these holes to the right size so that it can be bolted back on. Right, that won't fit in there, so what I'm going to do is just rotate the head of this round a bit so I can hang this off the edge of the bench. Okay, so that's gone through the through that side to 14 millimeter, which should take the bolt quite nicely. And it's also punched through the other side. Drilling that out is gonna be a little bit more difficult. With a slightly slimmer drill bit that only goes up to 12 mil, I can then go through the hole of the 14 mil hole I've just drilled, take that out to 12, and then attack it from the other side with 14. No, even the little angle drill is going to be too big for that. And the question is actually, do I need to go all the way through? Uh, yes, I do, because that... Uh, yes, I do. There's not quite enough there. So that will definitely need to go through. Out, out to 14 millimetres. A person slightly cleverer than me would have realised that I wouldn't be able to drill through that properly and would have drilled through it before I welded it all together. I found a 12 mil drill bit that I can get through. I have to take it out to 12 and then go from there. I think it will be a small file from here on out. Okay, that's now enough for that bolt to slide all the way through. Not that it will need to, but just the very end will need to go through that far hole. And that is all I've got time for today. So thanks for watching and join me next time on Gara's Garage where I'll finish this off and hopefully get the new diff back in the car. Mm -hmm.